Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I cannot see you guys, but you can see me. Um, as you can hear, I am not from um, the USA. I'm actually from Germany. I do have an accent, I know, and it's kind of mixed because I did live in Australia for three years. Um, I don't know if anybody knows Hillsong in here. They're like a worship band. Yeah? Yeah? Any Hillsong fans out there? Awesome. So I did three years of their International Leadership College in Sydney, Australia, and I lived there and studied the Word of God, and it was just an amazing time. But as I'm starting right now, this right here, as you can see, it's Germany. That's where I'm from. That's actually how it looks like right now. It's um, Christmas there. They have really nice Christmas markets. I don't know if you've ever been, but it's amazing. You should definitely check it out. Um, and I just wanted to start sharing my story. So basically, that's where I lived in Australia in Hills uh, at Hillsong College. And I want to tell you guys, the way I got here was literally God. Um, I was living in Australia, and I was like, God, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to live my life here. I'm going to you know, have a family, start a life here. And then the Lord told me, Lena, I need you to go to California, like literally in a dream. And I was like, no, nope, I'm not going. There's no way. I don't know anybody there. I want to stay here. I do not want to go. And I heard his voice so clearly. And I was like, Lord, if you want me to go, you got to give me signs. Like I need to, I need to know if this was really you. And so as I was driving to school every single day, there was a California song on the radio, and I switched it off. I was like, nope. Like, he was, like, talking to me from every angle. My friends were like, hey, have you ever considered, like, moving to California? Like, super randomly. Then I went to a wedding. One of my friends is a blind surfer. He surfs. He's a professional blind surfer. And he married my German friend. And the way they met was he was speaking at my school. And I said to her, let's go meet him. I want to go up, meet him. And so we met him, and then they, he stepped on her foot accidentally, and he couldn't see anything, so he felt her hair, and he fell in love with her. So they got married. L yeah, it was crazy. They got married in Australia, and I was at, at the wedding. I was a bridesmaid. And we were there, and I said, Lord, if you give me a sign at this wedding, like if you give me a sign to move to California, I will move. And so I was walking with another guy, and the guy was like, where are you from? And I said, oh, I'm from Germany, um, but I live here in Australia now. And he goes, oh, I'm from San Clemente, California. And I don't know why I'm saying this to you, but if you ever want to come, we have a free, like we have a room in our place and you could stay with us for free. And I was like, oh, thank you so much for the offer. And I went home and I was like, yeah, no. And it was so many signs. Like God was almost like, hey, like you need to go there. But I was like, no, this is my plan and this is your plan and I'm choosing my plan. I didn't know that I was doing it th at this time, but he was so prompting me to go. But I was like, nope, I'm living my way. And then basically I woke up in the morning and I heard his voice like, Lena, I want you to move there. Go there. And I'm like, on the third day when I heard his voice again, I said, okay, fine, Lord, I'm going to do it. So I went, and I went, quit my three jobs, gave my car away. I literally gave it to a girl who had to walk to school every day for an hour. And I was like, I need to give her my car. And I was in my living room and ready to just go to California. And then I checked my bank account. And I had s literally nothing in my bank account, so I couldn't even afford an airplane ticket to come over here. And I said to the Lord, I was on my knees, and I said, Lord, if you want me to go, you need to provide $1,000. That's how much the airplane ticket costs over here. And I was on my knees, didn't tell anybody about it. An hour later, somebody knocked on my door. Um, and it was a, one of my friends. And she goes, Lynn, I have an envelope for you. Somebody gave it to me. Um, and they want to stay anonymous. And they gave it to me. And they said they heard from the Lord to give this to you. I opened the envelope. And there was $1,000 in cash in the envelope. And I didn't tell anybody about it. And it was so crazy. I literally started crying. And I was like, this is crazy. And so I bought my airplane ticket. And I was here two days later in California. And I was standing on the pier, and I said, Lord, why did you call me here? Like, I had a suitcase and $100. That's all I had. I knew one guy here. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Like, why did you call me here? And I heard his voice so clear. He said, Lena, I've called you here for revival. I'm on the move here. Like, I'm literally, people are falling in love with Jesus here in California, Orange County. They're, they're falling in love with me. And you're going to be part of the story that I'm writing. And you're going to do ministry here. And I was like, that is, yes, amen. That is so crazy. And I was literally saying, God, if that is your plan, then 
yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be in. And it's not going to be easy because I want to show you guys a picture. Um, maybe we can get the Jesus and the teddy bear up there if you guys can help me. Perfect. So I want to show you guys this picture. It's, as you can see, Jesus and a little girl. And Jesus is saying, just trust me. And then the girl's like, but I just love it, God. This is my plan. This is what I have planned, and this is what Jesus has planned. And it's like so often we're like, this is what I'm going to do. This is, the, this is the job I'm going to do. This is the wife I'm going to have. This is the money I'm going to have. This is everything that, that, that I want to do. But, Lord, what do you actually want? What do you want me to do? Like, am I just going to live in my own world and do everything my, in my own control, or am I going to actually surrender it to you, and are you going to decide how my life is going to go, like, and what I'm going to do. And as you can see, the Lord always, always has a bigger and better plan for your life than you have. And so I had to learn how to give up, like, to literally give it up, control, give up control and be like, Lord, this is not, you literally created me, you created us, you, every single person here in the first place. So you exactly know what's best for us. But we think we have it all figured out. We think we know what's best for us, but we don't. God does. And so what does it actually mean to give up control, to surrender, to actually be like, Lord, I want to do whatever you have for me because otherwise I'm always going to be empty. If I'm never going to, like he created you in the first place. So he has a plan for your life. But are you going to go on it or are you going to do your own thing? Because if you're going to do your own thing, I can tell you right now, I was living in sin. I was literally, until I was 19 years old, not like totally away from God. And I was so depressed. I was so anxious. I was so unhappy. And since I've been following God, I'm literally like filled with this joy that I cannot explain. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, Lord, I am a life for you, not for myself anymore. Because when we live for ourselves, guys, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of, oh, like I need to figure out this life. But no, now I'm living for him and he is in control. So therefore, all my anxiety, all my depression, everything is literally surrendered to him because we're living this life for him and not for ourselves. We're giving up control. And so therefore, I want to show you guys the next slide. Um, I want to I want to read you guys this. He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Honestly, guys, this is the thing. Nothing is impossible for God. But are you? do you believe that? Do you believe that nothing is impossible for him because if we have faith in ourselves, we're always going to come short. If we have faith in him and put our trust in him, guys, literally, he can do anything. But the thing is, do you want that? Do you want Do you want to see mountains move in your life? But, like, you need to really give up that control and be like, Lord, I want to see mountains move. I don't want to move my own mountain. I don't want to move my own mountains. I don't want to have the faith in my, my, myself. I want to have the faith in you. And then you're going to see God show up in, the, in your life in incredible ways. Like, it's amazing. And I want to show you guys the next picture. So this is literally what we see right now. This is all God. Like, I'm in this life. I see what the world sees. I see what the flesh, what my eyes see, what people think. Um, I literally only see my perspective. I only see what I see. This is my plan for my life, and I'm seeing this right now. But guess what God sees? He sees this. He sees everything. So the, th the thing is, if we're trying to figure it out ourselves and we're trying to f control our lives, we're not following him, we're always going to be lost, confused, anxious. And we're not putting a hope in him. We're putting a hope in ourselves. And we see literally our view is so, it's like this. And God's view is like this, like he sees everything, everything. And so are we ready to give, a co give up control to him? Or are we actually like trying to figure it out ourselves and we're going to be lost like that? Or are we going to be like, Lord, I trust you I, because I know that you see this. You see my life and I want to surrender it to you because you know exactly where I'm going to go. So therefore, I want to follow your voice, not my own. Not the world's voice, your voice. Because the world's voice, guess what the world sees? This. God always sees this. So we have to give up control and be like, Lord, you know the outcome. You know, 
you know what, guys? This is, this, this is going to be weird, but God knows who you're going to marry one day. God knows what car you're going to drive. God knows how many kids you're going to have. God knows everything. And so, therefore, if he knows already everything, like, why are we still trying to control it? Like, Lord, I want you to do whatever you need to do because you know exactly where I need to be to be fulfilled and happy and, like, successful with you, not by myself, you know? And so that is the Bible verse that goes with that picture. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. So that's like, are we really like putting our minds above things or are we down here seeing everything on our perspective? Because let's say you get bad news, right? You get like, I just, personally, I just got bad news from Germany um, two weeks ago. And I was sitting in my car and I'm like, Lord, why? Why is this happening to me? I don't know how to deal with this. Like, I don't know how I'm, how I'm going to deal with this. And I was in my car, and I only saw what I saw. I was anxious. I was confused. I was lost. And then I read this, this verse, and I was like, Lord, you see everything from a different perspective. So can you, like, help me to see whatever you see? As soon as I prayed that, the Lord showed me, Lena, everything is going to be okay. Guess why I can trust him? Because he sees the overview. I don't. He does. So we need to put our trust in him and not in ourselves. Um, the next verse is, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the thing. Um, right now, we're like our minds are not renewed at all, right? And I, my mind used to be so. I used to listen to so many lies, like Lena, you're not good enough. You're not. You're not. You, you don't have what it takes. You're not. You can't even. You, you you cannot go on an airplane and move across the country. You you can't do anything. And I was listening to all these lies. And then one of my Bible school teachers was telling me she used to be so depressed. She was like, I was ready to like end my life. And I was reading that verse. And it says, renew your mind on the word of God. So she literally renewed her mind. She threw everything that was old out and renewed her mind on the word of God. And all of a sudden, she could see clear. She was like, whoa, all these lies that I was believing are not even from the, like, that's not what God wants us to think. That's not, like, if you get a thought in your head and it's going to make you feel sad, discouraged, depressed, anxious, it is not from the Lord. So you literally tell that thought to leave. You get, you know, get out of my head. You, you're not allowed to, literally that thought is not allowed to stay in your head. You literally be like, okay, God, can you please replace that thought that I'm having right now with, with the truth? Like that, what you're thinking and not what I'm thinking. Like the lies that you're, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be, you, this is going to happen and this is going to happen to you. No, it's not. Who, who, what, what voices are you listening to? Is that really like, is that God's voice? It's not. And the thing is, guys, I've seen this before. And if a person truly like believes the truth and listens to the Lord, you guys don't know how filled with joy they are. They walk into a room and be like, yeah, I, I know who I am in God. I know that he thinks highly of me. He literally loves me. He literally, like, thinks the world of me. And these people, like, this is the joy of the Lord. You're going to be literally a different person or a person who believes, yeah, I'm not good enough. I'm, I, I'm just, I can't do it. I'm like, th like, you don't want to live that life. You don't. Like, you want to live the life that God has created you for and listen to his voice. Don't, don't listen to lies, guys. Honestly, that is what I see in so many of my friends' lives and my students' lives. They literally are listening to lies. And it destroys their life. It really does. I'm like, man, I wish I could just, like, plant all these, like, seeds in your mind and you would believe that. And then your life would be so different. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the power of the mind. Whatever you believe in your mind, that's what you're going to do, you know. So that is so important. With that, I'm going to go to the next slide. With the, the tongue has power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. I don't know if you guys ever felt this, but when you speak out something and you say, yeah, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be, this is going to be just, this is going to be so bad. It has so much power over you. You don't even know what you speak out, when, what comes out of your mouth has so much power. And when you speak out, you know what? This is going to be awesome. God is going to help me. I'm going to crash these finals next week. I'm going to be amazing. I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this with the Lord. And 
that has power over your whole mind, over your body, physically and mentally. So please, like, make sure I literally learned this the hard way. Like, what I spoke out over my friends, over my family, over myself has so much power. You need to be so careful with that. Okay, so the next one right here. Let's go back. Yeah. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second to this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. With the whole attitude of like following God and wanting to live his way, not our own, like loving people is one of the most most important things that you can ever do in your life because that is the first command. That is literally so important. If like if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know what to do, love God and love people. If you just do those two things, guys, your life will literally change. It's it's amazing. Like I used to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, so what am I? What what do I have to do to like make my life perfect? I gotta do this. I gotta do this for myself, guys. I swear, I wake up in the morning and I think about. God, what do you want me to do? Who do you want me to love on today? Who do you want me to encourage? Who, who needs prayer? Who needs me to speak into their lives? Like, I literally wake up and think about what he wants me to do and not what I want to do. And guys, honestly, that takes so much pressure off, like, why are we actually here for? We're not here for ch just to live for ourselves and die. That is, not, that is not God's plan at all. We wake up and be like, Lord, I want to live 100% for you. And if you do that, if you live 100% for him, guys, you are literally be filled with this joy that I can't even explain. It's like, whoa, this is, this is what I'm created for. This is the purpose that we have. Not just to live for ourselves and live actually for the Lord and love your neighbor, love that person next to you. Um, that is the next one, love God and love people. And I, I want to share this. Honestly, I have so many friends, and same with me. I literally was like, God, I want to write books, and I want to go to Africa and, like, feed the hungry, and I want to do this, and I want to do, and I, and I want to, like, do so many things. But I was so blind to the person right next to me and the person in front of me because if I can't even love the person in front of me or next to me, like, God doesn't care about me going somewhere and doing amazing things or writing books if I cannot even do this. Like if I cannot be faithful in loving the person right next to me and the person in front of me. Because that is going to be what transforms their lives. That's going to be what transforms your life. That is something that fills you with this joy that I just cannot explain. Um, and with that too, it's like... If you seek first the kingdom of God, like everything else will be added onto it. So if you love the Lord your God first, if you love people first, if you do that well, you know how we always stress out, oh, I have to figure out this and this and this, everything else will fall into place. But you, gotta, you have to be like faithful in the little for God to trust you with more, you know. Um, and I want to share this real quick. You know how success looks so different in the world's eyes. So we're like, oh yeah, if you have your everything figured out, if you have this job, if you have this car, if you have this family, um, I'm gonna be successful in the world's eyes. I'm gonna be successful in my friend's eyes, and like what people think about me. How am I successful in God's eyes? What does God think about success? I'm not a failure in his eyes if I'm gonna love the person next to me and the person in front of me. And I had a friend, he is a youth pastor, he was telling me this. He was sitting on his bed one night, and he's like, Lord, I'm a failure. I don't have anything. Like, I literally wanted to do these, this, and this, and this, and I want to get this job, and I want to get this family, and I wanted to write this book. I did nothing. I haven't, like, like, there's no success in my life. And he has a high school group of 10 boys that he had dinner with every Monday night, and he just hung out with them, loved on them, bought them ice cream, bought, like, went to the movies with them. And you know what the Lord said to him? He was like, if you just love on these students for the rest of your life, just love on them, I call you successful. And I wanna, I wanna share this with you guys. Like, who are you trying to please? Are you trying to please the people around you in this world? Or are you trying to please God? Do you wanna be successful in the Lord's eyes or in people's eyes? Because that's all that matters. It really, it really is. Like, the, the thing is, when we die one day and we stand in front of Jesus, he's not going to be like, whoa, did, you did great at your job. You did this and this and this. Hey, he's going to be like, you love that person next to you 
so well. You love that person in front of you so well. I had a high school student, student last week pull me aside and tell me that she had suicidal thoughts and wanted to end her life. And I literally started crying because I had so much compassion for this sweet little blonde girl that was standing in front of me and said, people are mocking me at school. They're telling me that I have chicken legs and that I'm not good enough and that I'm not pretty and that I smell and I want to kill myself, Lena. I, don't, I want to end this life. And I was like, listen to me. Like, this is not how God sees you. God does not see you like this. This is maybe what people think about you. This is what people put on you. But this is not how the Lord sees you. And I see you as a daughter of the Most High King. And just loving on her and, like, going out for her, like, going out with her for ice cream and all these things, she is literally on her way up now. And... That, this, is, this is the thing, guys, like, we want to do all these amazing things and, and be successful, but if you, can't, like, if you can't even do this, like, love the person next to you or in front of you, then, like, what is the whole purpose? Like, what is the whole deal with life if we can't even, like, encourage each other in Christ and love on each other? Because that's why Jesus came. And honestly, guys, I tell you something, like, I was living in that way. I was. And I was like, Lord... I just, like, I'm so anxious. I'm so, I don't even know why I'm here on this earth. Like, why am I here? Are we just going to live this life and die one day? This, it makes no sense to me. And once I, once I literally realized there's a God in heaven that created me, that made me, that literally put me here on this earth for his purpose, not my own, I have something to live for, and that's him, not for myself. Because this life is so empty if we just live it for our own, for ourselves. Like, it's so, we're always going to be empty. And with that, I want to show you guys a picture. Let's see if I can get it up there. It's the one with the heart. Um, yeah. So, God created a heart, right? So, he created a heart in the first place. And there's a hole in our heart. And we try to fit that hole with relationships money, success, and nothing fits in that shape. And that was me, literally. I was like, I'm so empty. I'm so empty. I don't know what, to, I'm so depressed. I don't want to live anymore. And once I found the Lord, once I found him, and I felt that his way fits in that hole that I had in my heart, that I was so empty and depressed and lonely and just, I was not in a good space. And I found the Lord and I surrendered my whole life to him. And I, like now I'm living actually for him 100%. Honestly, guys, there's a joy that comes with that. Like, you cannot replace this with anything else because the Lord created you in the first place. He made your heart. So therefore, he didn't create you with a full heart because then you wouldn't need him. Like if he would put us here on this earth and be like, yeah, you're good without me. No, we're not, guys. Because that emptiness that you're feeling, this something that you're feeling in your heart, that is literally the place where the Lord needs to be. So the next slide is um, it's a question in the very end. I'm so sorry. There you go. Um, well, I can't find it, but it's okay. Um, it's, yeah, exactly. So success looks different in God's eyes. So, no, that's actually not the slide, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so basically, if you look at this picture and you think about, okay, what am I filling this hole with? Like, what am I trying to fit in that hole right now? Am I longing for something Oh, God, I, I, if I have this thing, I'm going to be full. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be great. And then you have that very thing, and you're like, why am I still empty? I'm st I, ha I have this relationship that I wanted, and I'm still empty. I have this job that I wanted, but I'm still empty. It's always the next thing. And we never actually realize that it, this is actually like the only thing that can fill that hole in us is the Lord. And so... I know this is a lot and like it's a lot of information, but I just wanted to tell you guys that literally it's almost like I was so blind and I was living such, I was like living over here and the Lord caught me over here and now I'm living over here. And yes, this life is not easy and it's, it's, but I wouldn't ever go back. Never, ever. I would never go back because I was so depressed. I was so anxious. I was so lonely. And once I literally committed my life to him and live now fully for him, it's, like the best thing in this world. It's because that's what we're here for on this earth, like because he created us in the first place. So I just want to remind, just like remind you guys to like question God, why am I actually here? Like, am I here to follow myself or am I here to follow you? 
Who am I here for? Who am I living this life for? Because if we're not living it for the Lord, if we're just living it for ourselves, it absolutely makes no sense. Like, we need to just literally be like, God, hold on to him. Be like, let's go. Let's go, Jesus. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know what you came in here with. Because in worship, I was like, Lord, like, what are students coming in with? And I felt like there's a lot of you just coming in with a lot of burdens that you're carrying on your shoulders and that actually the Lord is supposed to carry. You're supposed to give it to him and be like, Lord, I just can't carry this anymore. I'm stressed. I'm anxious. I'm worried about my future. And you're carrying this weight by yourself. And you're not letting, it's like, come on, like, let me take it. You're like, no, I'm holding on to it. I, I, I can't, I, I need to do it myself. I need to figure it out myself. And God is like, give it to me. Like, surrender it. Like, I want to carry your burdens. You don't need to carry your burdens yourself. Like, I want, I want that very thing that you're struggling with. Um, so I just, I just want to pray for you guys real quick. Can you guys put your hands on your heart? Jesus, we just thank you so much that you're here, God. Lord, we thank you that you are the answer to everything, God. And I just pray right now, God, whatever people are struggling with right now, Lord, that you would just take that very thing and put it on your shoulders, God. I pray that this heavy burden will be lifted up right now, God, and that we would actually follow you and surrender and live for you, God, and not live in our own ways, Jesus. Lord, I pray if there's anybody in here that's just feeling like not loved and not cared for and not valued at all, Lord, would you show them the way you see them, God? Would you show them that you see them as a daughter, as a son of the Most High King, that you love them unconditionally, that you literally care for them so much, God, that you have a plan for their lives, God, that you have a plan that's better than any of what we could ever dream or imagine. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will fall on people right now, God. I pray that the burdens will be surrendered to you, God, that this heavy weight will be lifted in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that we would surrender and follow you, God. Lord, I pray that we would that we would care about what you think about us and not what the world thinks, Jesus. That we would always live to please you, God. That we would always live to please you and not others, God, or not people. That we would literally be the ones who are standing up like, God, I cannot do this life on my own. I need you. I need you. I cannot do this. I'm on the end of myself and I need you, Jesus. So right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch people. Lord, would you just come in and take all of our burdens, Lord? Lord, I pray that there will be breakthrough in this room right now. As I'm praying right now, I feel like there's a lot, in you, a lot of you in here who just need to surrender. So right now, picture that thing that you're holding on to. Picture that and picture you surrendering it to the cross, surrendering it to Jesus. And being like, Lord, I trust you with my life. I trust you, Jesus. Because I know that if I'm going to try to figure it out myself, I'm never going to fill this hole in my heart. I'm always going to be empty. So I need you, Jesus. I need you in my heart. So I pray right now, Lord, that you would just, just fill that hole right now, God. Lord, I thank you that you're in this room. Lord, I thank you that you are just so in love with every single person in this room. No one is here on accident. You're here on purpose and you're here for a reason. And the Lord wanted you here this morning. So I, <laughs> I just feel that the Lord is saying, follow me. Would you follow me? Would you give it all up to me and just surrender? And one day be with me in heaven like, and just be so united and so happy with him. So I pray, Lord, that sons and daughters will be returning to you right now, God. Lord, I, I just thank you so much for every single person in this room. And I pray that you would just encounter people in a way they have never felt you before. That your Holy Spirit would fall on them, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are moving in this room. God, I thank you that we're surrendering everything to you, God. Because our life is, if it's in your hands, it's where it needs to be. And it's the best place where it can be. Not in our own hands. So I pray right now, God, that we would surrender to you fully, God. And that you would heal the brokenhearted, Lord. Jesus, that you would fill this hole in our hearts, Lord. That you're going to be the answer to everything, Lord. 
Lord, we love you, and I pray over these students to just encounter you in a new and a fresh way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.